interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Yo, it's Remember the Show. Slick with the flows, where the sparring can go. Who's gonna be on, man, you never will know. Guess you better tune in, cause we live from Chicago. Bilal Muhammad, that's the king of the tweets. Jason Anik looks like John, step his hands to his feet. Every Thursday, we gonna give you a treat. It's Remember the Show, hit play and repeat. Uh. And retweet, and retweet, and retweet. And retweet, it's remember the show, hit play and repeat. Huh? Episode 50, remember the show, Jason Anik, Bilal Muhammad, Kayla Harrison. Before we get to the star in the center of your television screen, Kayla Harrison, just quickly... Bilal remember the name Muhammad five short nights ago against Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Kayla Harrison, did you watch? I assume you did. How about our boy? <laughs> what a killer, huh? Excellent job. My hat's off to you. Young I man. love it. I appreciate Kayla. it. You know, I, I had to pull a, uh, one of your tricks, dominate grappling. Uh, yeah. And you know that. Why? Not, why do anything else? Why? <laughs> That's what I tell people. I'm like, dude, it was just like so easy. Uh, but it's crazy because like, that win was big, but it was like it meant nothing to me compared to the the bet I made with Kayla, <laughs> where winning that one was the biggest thing. She was talking so much trash. I know she was hype. She was on it, and I was like, oh, you know what? She's a little bit too confident. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I come out on top. I come out on top. Your boy keeps winning. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I know you've had a good end of the year, whereas ATT <laughs> has had a terrible end of the year. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, the like. We had Kyoji lose, we had Amanda lose, we oh, had Dustin wow. lose, we had Pedro lose, we had Ponzinibbio lose. And then, like, to put the cherry on top, I lost here. Bitter, sorry, kidding <laughs> me? But don't worry, Harrison always pays her debt. Uh, yeah, so. that's what I was about to say. There was never a question about that. No hesitation no. at any point. No, no. I mean, in fact, I'm honestly, I feel like... Um, Failure is my fuel and every lesson, like every loss is a lesson. So this is an opportunity for the world to see a different side of me, Kayla, the performer outside of the cage. I love it. I'm we just, are so used to see you so I'm, I'm just really nervous. So I'm just going <laughs> to keep talking until maybe uh, we forget that I have to actually pay the debt. I was gonna, everybody, everybody always has that when American Idol first came out, like, oh, I could have did this. I could be a superstar. Did you have that? We're like, oh I'm my gosh, go no. these you know, like all, you know, the really bad people they show that would have been me. Like <laughs> the, the ones where they're like, ah, 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 ah. that's me. Like it's, it's. That's okay. You, know, you got other, other skills that are doing you just fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I made like 500 sugar cookies today, guys. <laughs> okay. So, and I can't cook either, but I, I the cookies aren't that good either. You know what? I'm just going to stick to fighting. <laughs> Speaking of your other skills, so how is uh how's finding a new home or staying in the same home? Are you are you getting close to something or oh my god, A2, Brutus, A2, like really, you're gonna ask me this? Question? I know, I was about I'm to just, say, I was about to say, there's no got way you here. I got it's you. like a friendly show, like right, exactly. We, we can't have you on here and not bring it up. Like, if you had some breaking answers. news, our show uh, could blow up. No, <laughs> did you want the exclusive? <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to be going to no clue. Right. I still don't know, to be honest with you. I'm just enjoying the holidays. I'll, you know how Ali is. He's like, he even calls him. This is how, this is how I know he's stressed and like got too much going on is because he even calls me brother. Like normally he calls me sister, but he's so stressed. He's like, brother, brother, let me tell you. And I'm like, oh, Ali, baby, I am a sister. Okay. <laughs> He literally, he like texted me yesterday at like 1 a.m. Then he texted me at 3 a.m. And then he called me at 7 a.m. And then I called him back. I was like, bro, do you sleep? Uh, no. I do most of my, my work at night. And I'm like, dude, did you sleep at all today? I was like, <laughs> I was like all right. I was so like, okay. I got the same messages at like 4 a.m. He's like, I just want to tell you how proud I am of you. You're my hero. <laughs> I'm so proud to know you, brother. And I'm like, uh, dude, is this like a copy and paste? Or And I'm like, why are you so proud to know me? And he's like, you just, you're so amazing. You have so much. And he's like sending me voice messages at like four in the morning. And I'm like, dude, what is go like you need to sleep? I had to sit down with him in Vegas. Like when I when I went to Vegas, I was like, I was like, no, we need to have a serious talk about your health and wellness. Like <laughs> you are burning the candle at both ends. Oh, man. 
you like every time I talk to you, you're sick or in the hospital and it's because you need to chill out sometimes. Like it's okay to delegate. It's okay to like breathe. Yeah. But anyways, not to make it, not to make it serious, but yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> you plan on doing like, um, like a press conference or a decision, like the LeBron mm -hmm. James pull it where I get, I had three different hats, three different yeah, gloves. Yeah. I'm going to pick a glove. I'm going to be as obnoxious as me. That's what I'm going to do. That's a fantastic <laughs> idea, though. to be honest. That's, That's a great idea. You have a whole thing. You have people come up. There'll be a bunch of tickets. People people will definitely tune in. You're, I think you're like majorly overestimating my... I think more people would watch that than uh, Big Dark. John's podcast. <laughs> Def hey, I'm telling you. Wow. No, Kayla, don't underestimate your star power. But, but Bilal, in the same way, it's like, in the same way, Bilal, you should enjoy the next week and not worry about your next opponent. It's like, no, he's Kayla, already like, he's already calling out my boy Masvidal. He's like, literally, like, there's, there's oh, I love it. I like, love he's it. Like, already on, like, in location. Did it, did it, I'm like, wow, no, man. It's it. Simmer down, like take a my, breath. My coach is my coach is not letting me come to the gym this week. So I'm like, I got so much time in my hands. I'm like, all right. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I got so much time. I'm like, all right, Twitter fingers. Hey, well, I was getting his hey, Conor McGregor. If you're on. really like bored, you can come. Like, I got Christmas presents to wrap. I got <laughs> I got laundry to do. I got like exactly on the shelf to move. If you're bored, bro, come over. <laughs> I will hook you up with a job. You will be unbored. I'll just you know what? I'll just let you hang out with Emery for 10 minutes. You're like, oh my God, let me in the cage. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Speaking of trash talk, we saw you and Juliana going at it a little bit. And I'm like, if that, that fight gets made, honestly, that, that would be bigger than the Amanda fight because I, like the trash talk between you two would be so good. Well, I mean, it's honestly, it all started with you. Like you didn't, <laughs> you kept choosing her when during the during the game show and that really like it hasn't sat well with me ever since like i just something about that really rubbed me the wrong way like <laughs> collusion something i don't know what was going on there but you cheated and so she has a w over me and i'm not okay with it <laughs> what did you think of the fight like did you think i it, mean obviously you mean? were surprised about it and but like do you have like a respect <laughs> for her do you think that she needs to people need to start paying attention to gianna because she's a beast um, she just beat the goat no, I mean, obviously, I think that she had the night of her life. I think she went out there and she executed a perfect game plan. She got in Amanda's face. She wore it out. She took some heavy shots and wasn't afraid to to stand toe to toe with her. And um, I felt like I think I was surprised by her toughness, and I was surprised by Amanda's. Um, I think Amanda just had an off night. You know, I think sometimes it happens. Um, that's the tough part of this, you know, I'm not going to say anything bad, but it's, a, you know, it's a tough part of this sport is like, you have to be willing, you have to be able to be the best on your worst night. You know, um, it's a big Good factor. Point. I mean, that's one of the things that my judo coach, big Jim and still didn't like, I would fight with like separated shoulders and, you know, fevers and the flu, like Jordan in the flu game. Like I, he would make me compete and travel and, 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 compete in tournaments all the time. And I'm like, dude, why are you doing this? Like, I'm, I've got this, you know? And he's like, well, what if you wake up on the day of the Olympics and you have the flu, Kayla? And I was like, shit, that's a good. I, I tell people all that all the time. Right. I'm like, compared to other sports, when you're looking at basketball, uh, baseball, like there's, they have a game every other day or every other week. I'm like, yeah. with fighting, you have six weeks in that one day, no matter yeah. how you're feeling, you're feeling sick, whatever. It doesn't matter because yeah. like you, you still have to show up. So when you see yeah. people like you, Khabib, John Jones, who don't lose, like it's a different respect because, like, regardless of how you felt that day, nobody's gonna care about your excuses. Nobody cares about nobody it. cares. Nobody oh, cares. Man, I, I felt terrible that day, or even mentally, like you. I, yeah. I've had fights where you go in there, you're like, for some reason, you just feel flat, yep. but you still have to still show up. No, yeah, you still gotta find a way. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's honestly what I train for. You know, that to, to be like, I train for the worst case. I train for the best girl. I train for the best girl on my worst day every day. That's what I think about when I'm training. I think about who is the best girl in the world. And I think about what, like, how will I dig deep? How will I find a way? How will I overcome whatever obstacle is there? You know, that that's, I don't know, but that's just kind of how I live my life too. Like there, I mean, people go through so much, life is hard and like, can I get an amen? Life is hard, you know, and you got to find a way. 
I mean, the, the champions of life, the successful people in life, they find a way to, to, to come out on top. You know, they turn that lemon into lemonade, baby. I get the sense like the free agency doesn't stress you out much for, for real, right? Like, you're, yeah. uh, right? I mean, and and you work hard and life, and you seem to be having a lot of fun in your life. Like I have young kids too; it's a lot of hard work, but you seem to genuinely have a lot of fun in your life. I do. You know, that's kind of the beauty of this. Is I, you know, I'm not really a stop and smell the roses kind of girl. Like I'm the same way. I'm like, who's next? What's next? Let's do this. Come on! Like I want to fight. Um, and then that part, I have to kind of have, I've tried to like, shut up, shut up, shut up, you know? Um, but the truth is like, since I was six years old, I've, I've been, okay. We'll say that the first six, six years of judo, I didn't take seriously, but I started competing on the senior, um, senior roster when I was 12 years old. So from the time I was 12 years old until now, I've been training twice a day, literally. Like I started training twice a day at 12 years old. Um, I used to wake up at 5 a.m., go for a run or go lift with my cross-country coach. Then I would do, go to wrestling practice after middle school. And then I would go from wrestling practice to judo practice, do my homework in the car, then like fall asleep in the car on the way home, wake up and do it all over again. And that hasn't stopped since 12 years old. You know, I I've had small windows of breaks. So everything that's happening now is a result of those years of putting in the work and keeping my head down and busting my ass. Like I didn't get paid anything doing judo. Like I didn't get paid at all. Bare like, I mean, I got 25 grand when I won the Olympics, I got 25 grand and they were like, congratulations. Thanks for representing our country. Like, here you go. You know? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, honored and I'm humbled and I'm, I feel really blessed that I believed in myself from such a young age. And I kept my, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I earned this and I earned the, the time to, to be with my family. You know, this is my first Christmas with my kids, the first holiday season with my kids as they're officially mine, they're adopted, they're mine. No, no take backsies, you know, yep. um, my grandparents, everyone's in Ohio. I haven't seen them. So I went home for Thanksgiving. We're going home for Christmas. Like, this is, and normally I have a fight and normally I have a judo tournament and normally like I have sacrificed a lot throughout the years and missed out on a lot. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. And I know that, I know that everything's going to work out. You know, I'm a good person who, who works hard and um, I deserve for good things to happen to me. So I know that the money will come, the, the legacy will come. Everything's going to come to me. It's just, it may not be on everyone else's timeline, but it's going to work out exactly the way it's meant to. That was some powerful stuff right there. And that's the thing right there. Like, see, that was so powerful, but it's like, but now you gotta, you gotta pay up. You gotta pay up yeah. on your debts. He's like a media, scared. he's like a media member. He's scared. just, like, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. And <laughs> the song we picked today for Kayla to oh know, express her vocals, you get emotional with it. My heart will go on. <laughs> I was just watching Titanic yesterday and it just clicked. I was like, I got to hear Kayla oh, sing this God. song because we hear it all. We hear the emotions. You, you can get into the song right here. Everybody knows the song. Everybody loves the song. Oh, my God. I'm sweating. Oh my and God. this is, and Bilal, just to, this is due to, to Amanda's loss to <laughs> Juliana, yes? Yes, yes. Kayla, she bet, she bet, she bet the house on Amanda Nunez. She said it was, she was going to walk, walk in the park. It was going to be easy. She had a million people behind her telling me that, oh, you're going to lose. But you know what? Bully. Bully knows. They're like, if you see my picks, you see me. Yeah. Like, the knowledge I have is above oh everybody God. else. Yeah. 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 I you, call this. this. going to come back to bite you. You better be <laughs> stay humble. Stay hungry, <laughs> young man. Yeah, some more Hamzat's <laughs> making memes about this right now. We will go double. Where you at, Hamza? All right. And I will. It'll be even more outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I. You know, I got, I gotta, I gotta soak this in a little bit. But are you gonna sing with me? Like, are you gonna like be the background? Like, oh no, 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 no. The floor is all yours. The floor oh. is, <laughs> the floor is yours. I'm trying to get you a record deal. Uh, hopefully somebody's tuning in. We got Jay Z or somebody on the other line. You know, you never know. Like, they're, they're, about, you know what's gonna happen is my neighbors are gonna call the dog pound. They're gonna be like, someone's <laughs> beating a dog over there. Like, there's something's going on. <laughs> Hey, Cody, let's spin this track. Oh, 
Every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you. That is how I know you. Oh my God. Oh my God. So bad. Far across the distance and space between us, you have come to show you. Go on. Near, wherever you are, I believe that the heart does go on. Oh my God. That it? Oh my God. To touch us once and last for a lifetime and never let go till we're gone. Love, I loved you one true time. I hope to. If my life will always go on. All right, here we go. Everyone. Near. Far. Wherever you are. I believe that the heart does go on. All right. Okay. More. You open the door. Oh, that's Cody Barrow, ladies and gentlemen. You're here in my heart, and my heart will go on and on. Bravo! Bravo. Bravo. What? Hey. There were some moments, girl. I'll tell you what. There were some moments, girl. You cover your face all you want. You girl, you, some you it. You had you some moments. <laughs> not afraid of nothing. So much. I really hate you so much. I'm, oh I'm serious. God. Hey, you. I'm uh, serious. There were moments. You uh, got I'm you, telling you. You got a little skill there. You I was giving away a free show I idea I too. Like UFC can karaoke. I tell, can I tell you guys something? So as a child, my mom made me do dance, like tap, jazz, ballet, hula, blah 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 blah, and I had such stage fright. That I, I mean, I loved, I loved all of it, but I had such stage fright that every year before the big recital, I would pretend to be sick and I would never go on stage and do the big thing. So I feel like I overcame something today by Absolutely. doing karaoke on your Absolutely. That was big. Honestly, that, Ooh, I had to turn the conversation. Hey, that awesome. was good. Absolutely. Love you. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> Oh my god! And the, like the, your timing was right. Everything was right. You were with. Oh, them. I mean, obviously, I love this song. Like, who? <laughs> what girl my age didn't watch Titanic forty-seven times? <laughs> I had the two VHSs. Like, you had to take one out. Really? Yeah. No, I was like obsessed with Titanic. So that's why I was like, you know, I need to pick a song that you know everybody knows, everybody likes that. No, song. I appreciated that. Like, if you had done Island Boys, we would have really suffered. <laughs> like, it would have been really bad. So <laughs> I don't even know. I was like, I don't even know. I, 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 I couldn't even. I don't know I anything know about this. Saying. Island boy. That's all I would have sang, like just over and over. <laughs> but, oh my god, I'm sweating so hard. <laughs> uh, you know what? You don't need to find an opponent because I'm gonna fight you next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now, that was good. That was That's good. Like a tougher fight me. than Neil Magny, to be honest. <laughs> that was really good. I'm oh. not gonna. I'm not gonna lie, right there. That was. You had some moments right there. Next time, you're going to be more confident with it. You got something there. You got something in that voice. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. 
Well, you know, I got to say, you know, we obviously have ties to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And wherever you go, you got you got so much love over here in the Ultimate Aww. Fighting Championship world. Thank Just know you. that wherever you go. And we're going to be following you wherever you go. And Thank some of you. us who are tied to the UFC in some way, not even me, but, but you've made us follow PFL in ways we never have before. Aww. So single-handedly, for real. Thank no, you. seriously. And it's great for the other fighters there, too. So Yeah. Good for I you. mean, I love – I think it's great that fighters have – you know, it's, it's healthy competition for fighters to have their different organizations they can go to and choices. And, um, you know, you just got to be so good. They can't ignore you. So that's my goal. And that's what you are. Thanks. Appreciate you coming on. Thank Thanks, you for guys. Being on. That was awesome. Thank you for bringing your dad to your beast. <laughs> happy I'm going to you back on the game show again. Safe travel. Stay yeah. out of the gym. Relax. <laughs> get off Twitter. Uh, unplug, <laughs> my friend. Unplug, okay? Namaste. It's good for your heart, your soul, your brain. It's good for you. Bye, <laughs> awesome. yeah. guys. Have a good night. I tell you what, takes a lot to get up on the mic and do that. I tell you what, I don't care. You get that's a, that's yeah. different than getting in the cage. I'm sure she she is awesome. Yeah, she's a beast for that one. She's always fun to have on. Uh, that's the only thing I hate is that like her and Juliana were going at it a little bit on Twitter. I was like, ah, come on. I like both of you guys don't fight. And I was like, I hear, right, Hey, cool. well, we'll worry. Hopefully, hopefully we can have that conversation because, because she's made the move, you know? Yeah. Honestly, um, that would be, that would be cool. Cause like literally, like I said, the, the trash talk between both of them will be so fun. And I think the back and forth will be way better than any, like, I mean, obviously Amanda's a goat and she's a beast, but like, you know, she's not going to push it or like sell it. Like I think them two would sell it to each other. Yeah, I agree. Hey, hey, Cody, can you get on the screen for a second? Hey, what's up? I just want, you know, it's episode 50. Remember the show? And that was amazing with Kayla. But how about Bilal Muhammad five nights ago? Let's not get lost on this, people, please. Oh okay. Gosh. How about my boy? I can't even get my sweatshirt, but we got to get back to this fight for a second. And Cody, yeah, you can do questions for Bilal, whatever it is. But Bilal, you know, I said to you two weeks ago, like, what a year it's been, right? That was before this fight. And what a year it's been for you. And I know gold is the goal, right? But for your family, for yourself, for your brothers, like, I imagine your brothers, I'd be like giving you daps and hugs all day if I'm your brother. Just anyway, just because you're a UFC fighter, let alone what you've accomplished for Lou, for all the people around you. Like, <laughs> sorry, Cody, I know you're right there with me. I just, well, you know, I had to get a little, um, you know, I've been wanting to do this. This is what John wants to do. And he's like, I can't really do this. So, so you could just go after it for me. You know? Nah, I appreciate you, my brother. No, like you said, it's like, for, for me, it's a lot of it has to do with, for doing it for the people around me. Like, like you said, my brothers, like whether they, they can't even get into the apex, but they always fly down. They're always watching it there for the fights with me just to hang out with me afterward. Like all my brothers flew down Friday and they left Sunday at like 6 a.m. to go to work at 11 a.m. Uh, just so they could spend that night with me on a Saturday. Like they couldn't see me in the morning or anything like that, but it was just cool. Like I said, like we're a small gym in Chicago. We have a small group of guys. We're not a huge gym. And just the, now that my team's starting to get recognition and respect and from Juliana winning the belt, to me winning and then now being number five in the world and Ignacio Von one is coming up. My other boy Horacio coming up. Like yeah. we have a, a great group of guys and you know, my coach, Mike Valley, he's starting to get the the respect and uh, the people are starting to realize, Oh, well this guy, I mean, I don't think we, he's lost this year. So like we're a small gym, like he needs to be in that conversation and the uh, compared to like the guys that we beat, it's not like we brought in any specialists to, to beat wonder boy, we bought, we beat them with the guys that we have on deck. We didn't have, need to bring in any other crazy coaches or anything like that. Like we did it with ourselves. And uh, like I said, honestly, I'm just blessed. Uh, and when you, when I'm thinking back, looking back at the beginning of the show, when we were we put like unranked welterweight. Uh, That's right. And then now we're now we're ending this year off at number five welterweight in the world. And mm. then we just kept moving up since the beginning of this. I love it. You gotta love to see. It. I mean, we said in the pre-show at some point. The karate kid's going to look like the karate man. And that's what you made out. You just went out there and made him look like nothing. Dude. <laughs> well, you know, and, and the thing is, it's like I, I, I was listening to the Anakin Florian podcast and Kenny Florian started to make some of the points that I was going to make just uh, just in terms of just getting the W getting the win. You know what I mean? And, and there's a lot of different things. Right. And I think back to the Maya fight and I think back to the first round of the Maya fight. You know what I mean? Think yeah. about the five rounds in the octagon since that first round of the Maya fight. And the first round of the Maya fight, I would argue, was technical as well. And so all of it is just – it's just – and to me, right, 
all the stuff about how it was done or whatever, and you talked about not getting, you know, the finish or, or not getting stopped or whatever. Doesn't matter when it's a 30 25. Doesn't matter when yeah. 10 eights are splattered all over the scorecards. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at it like people are like crying and complaining, but obviously it's a lot of Wonder Boy followers. But I'm looking at it like, bro, there was a lot of ground and pound. I almost had a Kimura. I almost had a couple finishes, but I'm like, you're not gonna, there, you're not gonna please everybody. And uh, for me to get a 30-25 against a guy that's number five in the world, a guy that's only been taken down five times in 15 fights, and I took him down seven times right. in one fight, uh, it just shows that uh, I'm gonna be a problem for all these guys. And also too, like. Wonder Boy is a guy that guys say no to when they get when they get to the call. Wonder Boy, it's like, oh well, I'm injured or I don't want to. Ah, no, I don't like that style. It doesn't match up. These guys are sitting on their ranking and they don't want to fight him. And respect to Wonder Boy also too for putting his ranking on the line because a lot of these top five guys don't want to do that. And they would say no uh, to fighting somebody uh, below them. So like mm -hmm. respect to him because he was talking about a title fight all week. He was saying I want to fight Usman next. Uh, Usman hasn't fought anybody like me. So these people saying, well, Wonder Boy doesn't have it no more. He's not, he's not as hungry anymore. I'm looking at like he was calling for the Usman fight after that. He was thinking that he was going to go in there, knock me out, and scream that fight. So he was a hungry guy. Uh, he's a he's a professional. It's not like he went in there overweight or anything like that. He came to fight. But, uh, you know, he just ran into the, the wrong guy. Like I'm Bingo. a lot hungrier than all these guys in this division. And anybody that steps in front of me is going to be in for a rough night. So I texted you, I, you know, I thought, I just couldn't believe how calm you looked prior to, to enter the whole walk and everything. And I, obviously I could go back and watch every walk that you've done before, but was that, did that feel very nor? I mean, were you particularly relaxed or, or does that evolve ever as you, you know, do you feel different, different fights at different times? You struck me as really relaxed in that moment. Honestly, it was one of those, yeah, where I was very relaxed in the back and it like all week it was just like chill and it was like i think having that maya fight fighting a guy like maya who i've watched my whole life and you know respected and it was like dang i'm fighting damian maya that's when i got in the cage i'm like dang i'm about to fight damian maya so it was like a little bit nervous hmm. and then with this one i think that one helped me out because i i know what it felt like to fight a guy like that that somebody that i re respected and somebody that like wonderful i don't need to hate him we, we had so much respect for each other mm -hmm. uh before the fight and after the fight so it was like i was just too chill and then I was like, usually when with my walkout song, it's uh, it's about Palestine. And it's like, it gets me emotional. It gets me riled up a little bit. But then I was like, you know what? For this one, me and Lou were talking. And we're like, you know, we need something that's going to relax us more. We need something that's going to just have us chill and, you know, be fun. Like, so that I walked out to a Queen song. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. And it like, literally, I wanted to like laugh as I was walking out to it. Because I was like, people are probably like, what the heck is this guy walking out to right now? And I was just like, it hit the right moments for me. Where I was like, all right, this is what I want to be. And then I got in the cage and I was like, man, I feel so chill. And I looked over and Paul Felder was sitting at the commentary desk and me and him made eye contact. And he was just like, and I was like, you yeah, know, he's right. Like, why, why do I need to rile myself up? I'm not a guy that like, I've been in a locker room with Paul Felder where he's like punching a wall and like right. walking back and forth, getting angry. And I was like, man, why, am, why am I not like that before? And I'm like, I don't need to be like that. I'm, I don't have that personality. I don't need to be that guy. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe this is, this is the perfect level I need to be at right now. I love it. And we've heard Corey Santagin talk about he needs to be almost the opposite of that. When he faced Aljo, he wasn't sort of in that junkyard dog mode, and he needs to be in that killer sort of mindset. Every, for whatever works, but it clearly looked like it worked. Um, it just has to be just so exciting for your team to experience, you know, that. And, and, and you know, as we spin it forward, because as much as I want to say, oh, we don't want to talk about what's next, to me, and, and I have no right to say anything, but to me, unless it's someone above you, right? We got, we got Masvidal or Chimaev below you, right? Any, yeah. Anyone above you or, or maybe Masvidal or Chimaev might work. But but I know we don't want to worry about that. But for you, it must be hard not to be thinking about that constantly because you like to stay active. Dude, literally, like right right after that, I'm like texting my Ali. I'm like, yo, who are they talking about? These this, None of these guys got fights. Let's get this going. And he's like, brother, chill, relax, you know, <laughs> take some time off. And I'm like, ah. that's my coach. Like, dude, dude uh, I'm going out of town. Don't do nothing. And I'm like, what do you mean you're going out of town, dude? Like, I ain't got no injuries. He's like, ah, dude, take a week off, chill out, eat, you know, uh, spend time with the family. Because, uh, like, you know, a lot of people don't understand <laughs> it. It's like, I miss Thanksgiving. I missed, uh, I, right. I skipped my family to Cleveland to visit family for Thanksgiving. I didn't do none of that. I didn't see those family. I didn't, like, wow. I'm, my mindset's on the goal. And I was like, you know, you know, I don't care if I have to skip this, this, and this. Like, my family needs to understand that. And, yep. uh, 
so now it's like all right well now let me spend a little more time chill uh relax with them and it's like celebrate a little bit but it's like yeah i'm always looking ahead well, and i'm like this well, guy's sitting out i can skip this guy right now if i hop over right now I'll take this next fight but the ufc got four weeks off i'm hoping dana and them come up with something good where they had that they have their sit downs and things like that so we'll see what they come up with well i was gonna say like you remember how they used to have that end of year new year's eve show you know like how annoying for just the whole ufc staff john is a commentator like all these guys that have to prepare like during that four or five days after christmas like and you got to go you got a fight going into it like yeah it's so funny and I, like and i said to john the other day can you imagine if the ufc had a card on new year's eve it'd be fire like give me that fight yeah. card this weekend Although, so, no, like I this you. year though i'm good that we're done like with two, like 269 like we had a great run like we didn't have any like stinkers at the end like you know damn well that we would have had a pay per view at the end it would have sucked it would have just been like draw after draw after draw <laughs> but like I yeah, love, we, I we love ended off on a high note, honestly. Like, like I said, I think it was like good for the UFC. The, high, the highest note, the number five ranked welterweight in the world. We got to watch fight, <laughs> and then we got to watch Derek Lewis sleep a cop. That was great. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. But, but Bilal, I have to say too, man. Like, I like you. Ma you matched up against some of these guys that are above you more today than I did a year ago. Do you know what I mean? And and I oh he's frozen. But I th I think you've evolved, right? So so I look at the match, and I, I really do. I think and and what, so to me, I look at some of those matchups in a very different lens because of w having seen you fight now as often as you have against this high level competition. Yeah, honestly, like I think that this is one of those years where a lot of people's eyes opened up. Where I fought a bunch of different styles of list of guys, and I showed different things. Where it's like. Diego Lima, I threw over like 250 punches in a in a three round fight. And then Damian Maya, I had to defend 30 takedowns, and then this fight I had to I took that took him down seven times. So it showed that I could do it all and I could compete with all these guys. And even with even on the ground, like I controlled Wonderboy on the ground. It's not like he got up, uh, or it's not like I was just holding him for dear life or anything like that. Like I was able to control him, hit ground upon him. It was like people was like, well, he doesn't have the the B, the BJJ black belt or the the crazy. Uh, NCAA champion wrestler where you're like thinking that this guy, wait, this guy has high school wrestling and he's out here taking out Wonderboy who's never been taken out before. Like what's what, he's defending Damian Maya's takedowns. Damian Maya didn't, didn't get him in any bad positions at all. Like, wait, maybe he is good. Maybe all this talk he's talking about, maybe it's real. Maybe all this, uh, he's been yeah. calling for these top five guys forever. Maybe, maybe, maybe he did belong in there with them. And uh, now a lot of these guys are going to realize that I'm a bad match for all. And now, you're going to see a lot of these guys not want to say yes to me, not want to say this yeah, and that. Exactly. Like, oh. And especially when, like, when we started the show, I remember having conversations with you, Bilal, where you were like, these guys just won't take a fight. Like, they won't give up their number. Like, you know, they won't take fights with unranked guys. And then, like, look what happened when the bullies started fighting ranked guys. Just chipping away, baby. Exactly. And that's what I tell you. I mean, a lot of people are telling me, like, bro, you had a, you had to claw your way to number five. Why are you, why are you saying yes to Chamai? You had a you had to make him earn it. And I'm like, bro, it ain't about that. It's to me like, I don't want to sit there and wait on this. I was like, he's, he's 10 and 0. He has all the hype right now. So I'm like, I would say yes to that. Uh, Masvidal is talking about, he wants to fight. Uh, nobody wants to sign a contract. Yeah. I, I send me the yeah, contract. Well, as, as if, as if Malky's phone isn't going off with that Hamza fight. And he's just like, eh. yeah, I'm like, yo, send the contract. Like these guys are like, he's calling for Jake Paul. Like it's not going to happen. He's, he's getting in a fight in the, in the crowd. I'm like, all these guys are really just talking. And I'm like, bro, like me and Maslow don't make sense. I just beat two guys that beat you pretty handily. They both dominated you. Maya dominated you and Wonderboy dominated you. And I beat both yeah. of them dominantly. So Revenge it's like for a teammate too. Yeah. And it's like, why not make that fight? Like it doesn't have to be anything crazy or anything like that. And I understand like why he wouldn't want to do it just because, well, I need a, I can fight a McGregor and make, five million dollars but like you keep saying you want to what's gonna get me close to the title shot yeah. i'm right above you i'm number five so you beat me you're close to the title shot yeah well i, I think he probably remembers the camp for the ben askin fight like does he want to sit there for eight weeks and defend double legs like <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's on him like i mean the askin fight obviously went his way but he was prepared for 15 minutes of defensive wrestling i gotta think and Bilal's just asking part two with better hair so <laughs> <laughs> I just can't, you know, we've certainly gotten closer to the possible gift of Covington Muhammad huh. in the October. Oh, which, man. Which, Imagine in which. Brazil, too. Like, we'll just, let's, why not? Let's just have some fun. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing. That's the thing where I want to see. I'm like, man, let me get that offer. Let me get that call. It's I right want that there. call where yeah. it's like, he's calling me, man. Like Ali called me at 7 a.m. And I'm thinking, it's like, oh, what do we got? But it was nothing like that. But I'm like, <laughs> let it be one of those where it's like, yo, come in. And it's like, he knows I'm going to say yeah right away. And uh, I think th those guys now are going to really pick and choose who they fight and they're going to sit down or they're going to, they're going to ask for that big money where they know the UFC is going to say no. So they have that excuse of, for why they're not fighting. Oh, well, the UFC is not paying me what, what I need to get paid to fight this guy. And I'm like, for me, it's like, we, I'm in this sport to fight. I'm in this for sport to be the best in the world. And that's you yeah. to be the best in the world. You have to fight. You have to be in the cage. Yeah. And that's what I'm here to do. Well, where does that get you? You know, like, look at how picking and choosing your fights did for T. Wood. Like, when T. Wood was on the top, he should have fought twice, twice as much as he fought, and he didn't. Mm -hmm. Like, and it didn't favor upon him well with the company. So, you know, if you pick and choose your battles, don't expect the UFC to then pick and choose battles for you, too. So, it's a very, very interesting game that you have to play. And the guy that doesn't pick and choose his battles is my dude, Gerald Mershart. And that dude hyped I'm me so up. so glad you went there. Oh, you, were, you were watching on the bus, right? We were watching on the bus, and I was like, come on, why the fuck is his fight started now? Then we pulled up, and then they were like, yeah, you got to get uh, drug tested. And I'm like, I got to watch this fight first. So <laughs> I wait, we had to wait, watch the watch the whole fight. I'm like, and the second round happened, I was like, God dang, what's going on? And then lose like, uh, I think he I think he needs to win his third round. I was like, he's a finisher. Lou's like, uh, you think so? I said, dude, he looks tired. I'm like, bro, he's a finisher. He's like, all right, let's let's get it. And then I was like, got that ring. I was like, he's a finisher. Yo, he's a dude. finisher. Right? And so, did you get so to see hype. him? Did you get to see him? G yeah, yeah, we we like we we were able to chill. We went to the mall together. Uh, that Thursday. I mean, right? No, I saw you together, but I mean, after his fight, before your fight, do you see him at all? After? Oh no, no, like not until I got back to the hotel. Yeah, okay. I, I wanted to like go run run to him, but like they take you from there to the doctors and then to straight to the interviews. So, and he didn't he didn't get to watch your fight on other than he was back. Uh, to he watched my fight, yeah, from like the hotel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like they like you have to be out of there right away. Like right when you're leaving the locker room, they uh they put your bag on the and on the bus already. So like right when you leave the locker room, you can't go back to the locker room. Peace. Like, they were they were so excited to put that Priscilla Cachoeira back on the bus. They're like <laughs> later. <laughs> like <laughs> Dude, yeah, they're they're right at, right back at it. And I was like, man, how did I think Gerald not get a a bonus? I'm like, it's his birthday. He got a submission in the third round. Give this mother freaker a bonus. Seriously, and 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 you could certainly make an argument for a bonus coming your way too. You know? Um, yeah, I was I was surprised. Capacity, I was know? like, come on, man! And then I was like, come on, Herb, give me this finish. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, that could have done it for real. Well, so I'm yeah, gonna get but... a question here from Buffalo on the beat. So you talked to Pettis going into this fight, Bill Al. Pettis obviously starting his own promotion now too. Do you think coaching is something that he could fall into? Honestly, yeah. He, he's got a great mind. Anytime, like. I get to I when I used to train with him all the time, like you learn so much from a guy like that who's seen it all, done it all. And that's why I say like he's doing management now where a lot of these younger guys, the biggest thing for me being a young fighter was having like a Lou who's been through it all. And Lou like told me, like, hey, no, this one makes sense. That one doesn't make sense. This makes sense. Like to follow in his footsteps, because he's seen all the ups and downs and he's seen like the the people that are playing playing games with you or not. So like it was cool to have that guy as a mentor. So like Pettis, Anthony, like smart, his striking is next level. His ground game is next level. So like, I think you could definitely be a real coach. And I, like you said, he, like he makes it simple for you where it, he doesn't make you overthink it. Like he was telling me, like, don't overthink it. We're just going to do this, this, and this, and you'll be fine. Yeah. More, more than fine. Yeah. Uh, so, I, didn't shoot, I had to get on a June 2019, 2019 Chicago card. My really, yeah. I mean, I try to get on every Chicago card. Hopefully they never put me on a Chicago card. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping yeah. they come back to Chicago. But Chicago is very strict right now with uh, COVID protocols. So I don't know if they'll have any. Uh, we'll just wait for AEW fight. to come. AEW is going to give my boy Bilal a call. Yeah, uh, Punk said they're coming back here in February. So yeah, I want to get down there. They came at, They came here a couple uh, of weeks ago. I wanted to go to it, but I was like, I was in straight uh, training camp mode. I was like, yeah, I didn't want to go anywhere right now. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll keep Muhammad safe. We'll also try to keep him a little safe on the basketball court. Okay, be a little <laughs> just relax on the basketball court. You're a professional athlete. Just be careful. On hey, the basketball we're close. Court. We're close right now to getting in the celebrity all star game and uh, for the NBA. Let's Dude, go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get training right now. No way. That's it. Dude, I love it. You do yeah, gotta I'm get training. I'm hoping it comes through. Dude, I'm hoping if you, if you go to that, I'll, show up. I'll go to that. You know, you're in Vegas. Vegas? I don't know where it is, but uh, I don't care where it is. I'm, I'm going on. I'm like, dude, that's 
to be yeah, to be able to play that's bigger than winning a fight. Oh, that's unbelievable. And I hate when people go on there and they're clowning around. I'm like, like yeah, ball, come let's ball. Like, oh, yeah. absolutely. But that you got to be in shape, run up and down a full court basketball court. You know, if you're not in basketball shape, well, I know for you, piece of cake. But but it's a different kind of shape even than a five round fight. I'm sure. Um, yeah, yeah. It, like me and Lou went, we were playing on Tuesday. And uh, like Lou hasn't trained in a minute, so I'm like, yeah, I I, I can see it. You you you're losing. He's like, nah, I gotta I gotta get back to playing here because you get tired. People don't like. Yeah, when I wear my uh my Apple Watch or anything when I'm playing ball. Like I'll burn like a thousand calories just playing basketball. And people like don't realize it, but like you're having fun. But I'm like, man, this is like burn more calories than a freaking MMA workout. That was me. See, Bilal, were you the kind of guy who like I'm a I'm like a baseline runner. Like I'll just annoy the shit out of you if I'm playing ball. Like oh yeah, if you're playing D against me, like you're gonna you're gonna get tired. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, just yeah I'm like rubbing into screens on purpose. Like oh, it's just fun. <laughs> so. Next fight's gonna be main event Muhammad making another appearance. There's a pretty good chance of that. Unless unless it's the co main on an enormous pay per view. But you know, I love the fact that your next fight, very good chance to be five round. And could yeah, be the title. Honestly, that's what that's what I'm that's what I've been waiting for. That's what I've been wanting to do. So hopefully that uh the five rounder comes. And I think that it's gonna show another side of me too, where they've seen this side, this side, this side. Now five full five rounds, people are gonna be really surprised. So one question I have, it might, and it might be nothing but just fluff, but what did Wonder Boy say to you when you guys were down on the canvas? Was it just anything? Was there anything just? No, uh, you know what's guys? funny? You know what he said when they were sitting down after the fight? He was like, right after the fight, he was like, hey, bro, I'm sorry for not for missing the show. I'm going I'm to come on the show. <laughs> Is that what he said? I come swear on. to God. I was like, bro, I love you, man. You're the, you're you the best. You know what? And it's, a bit, and it's funny. And I was like, it's so funny. The one guy who really kind of stood us up was Wonderboy. It's like, what? He's the nicest guy ever. That is unbelievable, man. Like, he's that so nice that I That's forgot that he did. Like, I was like, yeah, of course Wonderboy showed up. Dude, he's the man, honestly. And isn't it nice that now you guys, you know, now you can be cool. But I, I got to be honest, man. I love how you keep that fucking line between your opponents. When, like, as a fan of an athlete, man. It's nice to have some of that Michael Jordan still alive in 2021. You know what I mean? In yeah. Like, I honestly, you know what I was watching all week. That was really good. If you guys ever watched, it's on uh, ESPN Plus, the the man in the arena, seeing Tom Brady. It's like about Tom Brady. That's you watched nice. it, dude? Yeah, we have. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, it's, that's our boy. It's so yeah. good. It's like seeing his <laughs> mindset. It was like, we were, because we're sitting in the hotel, we ain't doing it. I'm watching that. I'm like, man, he's hyping me up with his. Oh, yeah. His mindset you see, dude, is crazy. You see the end of the first, the end of the first episode. He's like, and I'm still fucking doing it. You know, four, dude, like, like, 44 dude, years old. The best. Even I, here, I even here, like the first time I heard John curse, I'm like, man, John curses. Then I'm hearing Tom Brady curse the whole time. I know. I'm it's, like, dude, it's just these Boston guys. I know. Hey, so you know what's funny? So the menu for the restaurant where they where where they had a the, Bilal went to a restaurant, right? They had a custom menu congratulating you, right? Oh. And, with, and they bleeped out a word. But what I was that we were going back and forth. You know, it could have been congratulation or just congratulations, right? We, don't, we, don't, we need that. We need that the f word in there. We don't need fudge or the bad, right? Just congratulations. So you added a sensor to not have a sensor. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Huh? But anyway. Um, I don't know if we're back next Thursday or not, I guess to be determined, but either way, Bilal, you created oh, a lot of joy God. for us Saturday night and a lot of people around the world. So I feel like we're going to do a bully B award show, you know, like give out some, some Bilal awards. Yeah. And, and maybe, well, maybe two weeks from now we'll do that. Yeah. You know? I mean, we know, um, we know we can get Ignacio on to accept the KO of the year, you know, <laughs> we might need to have like Lou and Jared and maybe Brendan, you know, just some old school crew. Um, you know, for on an award show, you know, dress up a little bit or something. That'd be cool. That, that'd get be Jared fun. in I'm a that. t shirt. <laughs> he likes his Jesus to party, you know? <laughs> Jared, Jared, yeah. Jared, man, seeing his wedding suit, I'm like, bro, that's a hot suit right there. He's like, dude, yeah, I know how to wear oh, a yeah. suit. I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll get Jared in a suit again. Even for Jared, he's got to love his boy being number five in the world. That he must be thrilled. All your boys got to be thrilled. I mean, that's that must be just so great for you to trickle down all the people that. Right, I mean, Jared's fucking pumped, right? Yeah, it's a uh, dude. It's it's as I said, like you can tell people that are like truly happy for you, and you you'll get those other ones where it's like they'll send you that good luck or whatever before that they never talk to you, and then they won't say nothing afterwards. So you're like, man, they're probably hoping I would lose, and like I I can I can weed you guys out. I know I know who's fake and who's not, and I'm like, there's some legitimate guys that are just like legitimate happy for you, and like those are the ones that are like they just make you happy because you know you have genuine people in your life. Hundred percent. All right, boys. Well, fifty in the bag, twenty twenty one. If we don't see you next week, we'll be back two weeks, maybe for a little award show. But 
for the fifth ranked welterweight in the world. Bilal, remember the name Muhammad, and our director, Cody Merrow. Happy 2021. Thanks for being part of Remember the Show. Keep tuning in Thursday nights, 830 Eastern. We love you all. Peace out, guys. Happy New Year.